I'm Serena Yuri. I'm the Paintings Conservator at the Cincinnati Art Museum, and we're going to take a closer look at the Retablo of St. Peter. This is the altarpiece, Retablo of St. Peter, attributed to Lorenzo Zaragoza and dating to about 1395. It's Spanish. It shows eight scenes from the life of St. Peter and a crucifixion, a resurrection, some pictures of saints down along the bottom, and the statue in the center. We acquired it in 1960 in this configuration. At that time, it was known that the statue is of a more modern date than the rest of the altarpiece. We also don't know what church it came from originally in Spain. And we also are pretty sure that we don't have all the pieces that would have been originally in this altarpiece. At some point when it was taken out of the church, it was taken apart and sawn apart. The, the wood pieces were taken apart and it was placed in this configuration, and that's how we acquired it. I just wanted to point out that my photograph was taken with one of the panels before conservation, and this is the particular panel in the, in the retablo. Here's another view of the altarpiece. It's about 10 feet wide and 11 feet tall in this configuration. I took on the large task of conserving all the panels, and I'm just going to show you one of them to give you an idea of the kinds of information that conservators are able to get from a painting such as this or an altarpiece such as this. So this scene is the draft of fishes. It's a scene where St. Peter first encounters Christ, and it's the first scene in the chronology of the panels that we have. On the left is the panel painting before conservation, and on the right, it's after conservation. You can see that it's all gilded, very elaborate carved decorations. Course of the treatment, I had the good fortune to have a demonstration of digital x-ray, and what if, this was one of the panels that we x-rayed because I knew there would be a lot of things inside the panel that would help us. So I just am going to talk you through a few of the things that um, conservators can learn from the x-ray of an old painting on wood. Here's a list of some of the characteristics that I have been able to identify in this x-ray. For example, the wood grain, obviously the kind of vertical striations that you see. In this case, it's a pretty broad pattern, which means it's a wide-grained wood, which contributes to the problems that the panel has because the wood is not the best quality. In fact, it's not a fine-grained, evenly-grained wood. It is just the kind of wood that would have been available in Spain at this time. An obvious of most interest to a conservator would be the paint loss. So I can see where some of the paint has been lost on the composition that you see on the surface of the painting. These are just some of the uh, areas that I've highlighted. There's a, more paint loss in this scene than these three arrows indicate. There are knot holes throughout the panel, and you can see some of them are very large. This is uh, another key point in the poor quality of the wood, and most of the problems that the paintings have, the altarpiece overall has, is due to the poor quality of the wood, especially the knot holes. Iron spikes are shown coming in from the sides of the panel. These are hand wrought iron spikes that would have been used in the original construction of the altarpiece before it was painted. So when the altarpiece was removed from the church, it was sawed apart and put in this configuration that we have now and the remnants of the spikes are still buried in the wood. These tiny bent nails are also original and hand wrought, and they're just used to attach the frame, the decorated, the decorated gilded framing that we saw at the top of the scene to the base panel. And those would have been done before any gessoing or gilding. So they're buried very deep in the panel. And as you can see, there, there are many of them and they're all intact. The peg holes are along the sides. These are long, round holes. Some of them still have wooden pegs in them. Again, they would have been sawn apart when the altarpiece was disassembled. 
but they were used to align the vertical planks that comprise the altarpiece and kind of help as a structural element to help with the stability of these enormous altarpieces. The modern screws we find in the frame member. So they are slotted screws, actually, if you can see them close up, and there's no doubt that they're modern. And they also prove that this particular frame member on the right side has been attached to the front of this painting, but there are no original attachments. So it's likely that this frame member, while it came from somewhere in the altarpiece, probably did not come from this particular scene. The modern steel plates are on the back of this particular painting, and they're used to secure it to an, the adjacent painting. It's likely that these were actually applied here at the museum once we had acquired it, so after 1960. Now the trim spikes I've showed, are they line up in a line, and these are long, the remnants of long spikes that also were original and would have been hammered in from the back. For altarpieces of this period in Spain, they were often assembled in the church and then they were buttressed on the back with these enormous timbers in the shape of an X. So these trimmed spikes are the remnants of the original structure of the altarpiece. So these four characteristics that I've highlighted here of original construction, if we had x-rays of all of the panels that we have and we were able to identify all of these characteristics, we could probably use this information to figure out how the altarpiece originally was constructed, in what order the scenes appeared, and maybe even what, if any, scenes are missing from our altarpiece. The altarpiece is back in the gallery now after conservation, and it's shown in this configuration, of course. If we had x-rays of all the panels, we could maybe also identify what church it came from originally, or we might be able to identify other pieces of it that are in other museum collections. So that would be a future research project for us at some point. I hope you've enjoyed this closer look at the Retablo of St. Peter by Lorenzo Zaragoza.